Okay, answer this one. Would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? Come on, you have to choose one. Uh, I just want to get out of this fucking rain. Who told you to stop digging? A fascist group of paramilitary warlords bent on using their combat expertise and overwhelming firepower to dominate their enemies and expand their territory. Smart and organized, the True Sons are led by a former Joint Task Force or JTF officer, Colonel Antoine Ridgway, whose ruthlessness and combat prowess make him and his combatants a horrifying force. The dominating faction for a long time, the True Sons were responsible for the desertion of a large part of the JTF, the creation of the outcasts actively caused the forming of the Hyena Council and wiped the castle settlement from existence. Let's take a look at how they managed this. By the gate, Sergeant. Looks like you've got a riot, bro. Washington DC is the most heavily protected city on earth. Within its limits, 177 foreign embassies, 550 elected officials and 23,000 military personnel. In the event of an attack, critical personnel are evacuated, underground shelters open, while complex defense systems patrol the sky. But they didn't expect the green poison. 27 days after Patient Zero showed its first symptoms, DC fell. Riots started happening. Troops retreated to bunkers and civilians were left in the street. The JTF, a group combined of first responders, National Guardsmen and other military personnel were stretched in. Understaffed and overworked with meager resources, their ranks decimated under the constant stress of the virus, civilians in need of help and hostile factions looking to take DC for their own. In an attempt to control the spreading of the virus, the JTF established a quarantine on Roosevelt Island. Colonel Antoine Ridgway, Colonel of the Maryland National Guard, was given the responsibility to administer the quarantine and ensure that everything ran smoothly. Colonel Ridgway, refugees are swarming in from all over the city. We've got too many of them to handle. Look here, we're wasting resources on these people. What do you suggest, sir? Send them to Roosevelt. This is no longer about prevention, it's about damage control. But sir, they won't listen. Tell them we've got food and medicine. They'll follow you like moths to a flame. If you get any resistance, go straight to Plan B. Plan B? You make them follow you. It's better that they're interned. At least they'll die in one place. However, Ridgway quickly noticed the tragedy and despair and started to lose faith in the JTF's ability to save DC. There was no way they were all going to survive, so he decided to focus on damage control. Hold still. There you go. Better already. What's his prognosis? Uh, Colonel Ridgway, um, not good, sir. He took a bullet. We've tried penicillin, but his wound has festered. I thought morphine might ease his pain. How's our supply cash? Truthfully, sir, we're running low. And not just in supplies, but manpower, too. We've got civilians piling up outside the doors. Under these conditions, it's difficult to separate the infected from the healthy. The doctor's expecting a new shipment this afternoon, but it almost certainly won't be enough for everybody. Pack all this up and move it out to the barracks. But, sir, we can't just... Are you questioning my orders, trooper? Well? No, sir. Right away, sir. Uh, what about the patient? Put him back where you found him. He's a dead man anyway. Safety off. Make sure the medical items get sent to the clinic. And the food goes to the storage by the mess halls. Put those crates back on the truck. Wait. What? We're not wasting any more supplies on these people. Put them back, Private. Sir. What the hell are you doing, Colonel? They are already dead, Doctor. Are you insane? They need care. What about the staff? Collateral damage. Now, take your hand off my soldier. If you go ahead with this, I will report your con- What the f Bar the gate, Sergeant. Looks like you got a riot brewing. Lock and load! Put it down. 
As a strong believer in authority and discipline, Ridgway decided to take matters into his own hands. In frustration and fear of the capital's future, he deployed guards around the quarantine with the order to not let anyone out. Following that, he started to redirect the resources coming into the quarantine, letting people starve to death and withholding medicine. In his eyes, the sick and weak were already dead, so his number one priority became to secure the future of his own men, whatever it took. Due to the chaotic state of the city, he was able to abuse this authority for a long time before the commander of the JTF found out. The JTF then imprisoned him and brought him to court. Put down your weapons. You're under arrest, Colonel. That's bullshit. The Colonel's the only one keeping the city under control. You can't arrest him. He's a hero. Unarmed civilians were cut down on this man's orders. He's not a hero. He's a murderer. We can take them, sir. That's better. Act one, Ridgeway. You're under arrest on 55 counts of murder. A court-martial will be held shortly to determine your guilt. Or innocence. History will show he was right. Those people were affected. They tried to break the quarantine. If they had, they would have caused a second outbreak. The colonel saved thousands of lives. If that's going to be your defense, Ridgeway, I'm sure it'll be a fast trial. You're not taking the colonel. Fuck. Let's get him out of here before more of his followers show up. This court determines that you, Colonel Antoine Ridgway, have been found guilty of violating the Uniform Code of Military Justice for the crimes of unlawful detention, failure to obey an order or regulation, and murder. You will therefore be stripped of all ranks and titles pertaining to your service in the armed forces and detained until further notice. Mr. Ridgway, would you like to make a final statement? Very well. However, it did not take long until loyal members of his unit freed him. In his own eyes, Ridgway did nothing wrong. The betrayal of his fellow officers filled him with rage and hate towards the JTF and federal government. As soon as he got out, he gathered men from his former unit and the stock where he was held prisoner. Together they captured the JTF officers that had imprisoned him and held a symbolic tribunal for them, only to execute them all moments later. And so, the true sons were born. Give it to me straight, Manny. It's bad, Major. A new faction has formed around Colonel Ridgway. Mostly guys that were under his command before he got arrested. They call themselves the True Sons. Great. What else? We're doing our best to protect the civilian settlements, but I can't see how we'll manage unless we're reinforced. I'm working on it, but everybody's been hit hard by disease and desertions, and we can't just ignore border security and vital installations. Understood, Major. It's a shit sandwich. It's worse than that. It's a whole buffet of shit. But the stakes are too high to get finicky. Ridgway granted himself the rank of general and now had a paramilitary that showed fierce loyalty under his command. In his views, the True Sons were the only hope in restoring order in DC. Ridgway was ambitious and had a strong desire to lead. He was a highly capable strategist and a charismatic leader. This, in part, he owed to his lucrative career as a salesman. He used this experience and his developed skills to enhance his leadership style. This shows in how he dominates the conversation and expresses his concerns if he disagrees. Where others might have difficulty deciding when times get hard, this is when Ridgway is most decisive. After his career as a salesman, Ridgway self-financed his way through the Reserves Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, which is how he eventually joined the Maryland National Guard and eventually achieved the rank of colonel. His decisiveness and ruthlessness showed when he prioritized the safety of his men over the infectant, as it did with insubordination or desertion. He would personally execute those who try. And loyalty. Not just empty words, but the virtues I expect you to live by every day. The foundation upon which the true sun stands. We are at war. Our enemies are the hordes of degenerates who will see this city burn and the failed remnants of a corrupt government. The same impotent government which lost our fine country to sickness and ruin. We will destroy them all. But we can only win this war if we stay true to the cause and to each other. Loyalty is the glue that holds us together. Without it, our foundation will rot crumble and fall. So when I encountered this loyalty, where I find such rot, I must cut it out before it spreads. Please, don't do this! Now these soldiers swore the same oath as you did. They swore to be loyal to the cause, to me. 
they proved to be neither. Instead, they abandoned their post and tried to sneak away in the night. They are oath breakers. They are deserters. We are at war. And in war, the punishment for desertion is death. No, please. We were going to come back. We were going to... From their headquarters in the Capitol building, they controlled the southern part of the city. The field quarantine created the outcasts, which were terrorizing the western part of the city from Roosevelt Island. Although the True Sons weren't actively at war with them, encounters were hostile and would often end with both sides suffering losses and one side coming out on top. We got, a, we got eight casualties, sir. Three KIA, two expected. No, no, no. Tell me what happened, son. Fucking outcast came running in, screaming. We lit him up, but he was too close. He just, he just exploded. You did well. You did all you could. <laughs> what, what the fuck is wrong with those people? Don't you worry. We'll make it right. We'll wipe them off the face of the earth. Toward the northern part of the city, the Hyenas, a loosely organized gang of opportunistic raiders, started to form a threat. True Sons and Hyenas were nemesis, actively waging war against each other, which led to the unification of the Hyena clans and the creation of the Council. This formed a major problem for the True Sons. Outcasts and Hyenas were even rumored to work together to defeat the True Sons. However, the opponent he feared most, although smallest in size, was the Division. As the True Sons increasingly became a threat, the Division started focusing their attention on them, which resulted in the loss of many of its men. We've underestimated the Division for far too long. They've hit us hard, sir. But we've still got the numbers. Numbers don't guarantee victory. We need to change our strategy. We could buoy up our defenses. The hyenas and outcasts won't last long with the division around. If we had less to contend with, perhaps... That's out of the question. We are not scavengers, we are true sons. We will not hold up in the garrison like a bunch of cowards. We must launch an offensive while we have the chance. I advise caution, General Ridgeway. We could lose a lot of good soldiers. This is a war, Sergeant. We either lose soldiers or we lose control. Ridgeway had other plans for the various civilian settlements across DC. He and his men believe it's mutually beneficial to demand tribute in exchange for protection. Some settlements wanted nothing to do with them and believed the demands were too harsh. However, the settlements didn't seem to have much of a choice. Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Welcome. What a lovely place you have here. Even through all these troubles, you still manage to keep it quaint. I like that. Thank you, sir. You know, a home says a lot about a person's character. You know what your home tells me about you? No, sir. It says you're assiduous and orderly. Perhaps a little too much. But you're certainly responsible. Must be nice to live in peace and quiet. Unfortunately for us, there's a price for defending communities such as this. But at least you are keeping out of harm's way. General, I... Before we came here, we ran into a neighbor of yours. He didn't seem to appreciate the good work we do around here. And I couldn't accept that, not after all my men have been through. But I don't think we're gonna have the same problem. Like I said, a house tells you a lot about a person. I can see that you're compassionate, generous. Please, j just take what you want. That really is mighty kind, Mr. Williams. People like you are making a real difference. It's inspiring. We'll be back in a week. I trust you'll have more for us then. Consequently, the tier the settlement was interested in negotiating with the True Sons. General, there's a woman here. Says she's a representative of the theater settlement. Wants to speak with you. What about? She wants to negotiate. 
negotiate. Why would we want to negotiate with those people? Stand by, sir. I'll ask her. Uh, sir, she thinks a truce could be mutually beneficial. Shoot her, Lieutenant. Sir? Shoot her and dump her body where those cowards will find it. And if anybody else comes to negotiate, shoot them too. Understood? Uh, yes, sir. The castle settlement, being geographically close to the Trusans area of operations, had serious issues when it came to them. They were offered a similar deal to the Trusans, but were hesitant. They decided they wanted nothing to do with them, but this didn't turn out well. General, do you know anything about these mortar rounds they're asking us to ship over to the plaza? I do. Make sure they get what they need. Can I ask what they're planning to do with them? Why? Is something troubling you? I just don't understand what we're doing there. Doesn't seem like there's anything of importance in the area. Well, we have problems to solve. And to do that, we have to be open-minded about how to solve them. Understood, General. Ridgeway ordered his lieutenants to collect DC-62 that was stored in a bunker below the Lincoln Memorial. But what were his plans with the DC-62? The castle is Sergeant Snow's territory, General Ridgeway. Mike Snow, Captain Wilson. He's a deserter. We don't address traitors by rank. Sorry, sir. Word has it he's operating an open-door policy. He was always weak. They've got refugees crowding in by the hour. The worst this city has to offer. Nothing but degenerates and backstabbers. And what good are they? That place will become a breeding ground for the virus. We must tackle the problem at the source. It's time to start cleaning up this city. Let's see how this DC-62 of yours holds up. The castle sediment, home to hundreds of refugees, was now a wasteland of chemical residue and dead bodies. The Trusons launched a chemical mortar attack with DC-62 from Jefferson Plaza to wipe the entire settlement from the map. Mortar attack. Chemical. Seven survivors. Yes, Manny. Seven total. The sheriff just came in. Can you get these people to safety? I'm gonna go kill the bastards that did this. You're safe now. I promise. The attack came from Jefferson Plaza. You know what to do. Hey! Kill them all. Seven people survived. There is much more to the story of the castle and the True Sons, but that's for another intel brief. The division retaliated by launching an offensive on Jefferson Plaza, where Lieutenant Wilson was in charge of D-62 production and shipping. One by one, the division drove out the True Sons from their strongholds in the Viewpoint Museum, American History Museum, Space Administration Headquarters, and finally, the Capitol Building. In the offensive on their final stronghold, the agents were tasked with two objectives. The primary one was retrieving the briefcase containing information on the broad spectrum antiviral, who the True Sons had taken from the wreckage of Air Force One, and the secondary objective was to eliminate the True Sons and above all, Ridgeway, in the hope the True Sons would scatter and become disorganized. The division was successful and drove the True Sons out of their castle. Although small parties show their face every so often, they're not posing a real threat. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the Intel Brief, I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram for daily and behind the scenes updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in the intel briefs on each faction with summarized information from the video. Currently don't have too much time to do them, but in the future they will come. To end the video, I have a question for you. What do you think the future brings for the true sons? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.